um, I was a bit surprised to be invited here. I asked myself, what do I know <laughs> about anything? Um, so, unsurprisingly, I'm going to talk to you kind of through type and tech. Um, not so deeply about either. I've kind of decided to take the position. It's automatic. What's going on? Uh, to talk to you through the lens of failure um, and hubris and uh, seizing the day as well as uh, f fucking up the day. Um, which is, I think, to be honest, the thing I know most and have most experience around. So this is me, Beaker. Um, and warning, uh, this is about 150 pages, so it's going to be a bit of a, a whistle stop, whistle stop hey, tour. Oh, can you? Okay. Okay, so letters have always been central to my practice. Code has always been central to my practice. I think that came from literature, being interested in literature. And so I was kind of a graphic designer, not a very good graphic designer, kind of just making things, exploring type and tech and how they can mix together, searching through um, old hard disks, finding things that I'd forgotten I'd even made, actually. Record covers. I think this is some um, a spline tool that I mixed together. Um, you know, but records are square. Stereotypography was a design feed that I set up. Um, I tried to get all of my favourite design feeds into one single place and kind of wrote a script to scrape them all together and stick a website um, on top of that. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, just making what I what I wanted really, kind of naively. There's also an introduction to kind of bitchy graphic design uh, communities as well. Refresh, reload, art on a dead format. This was another project where it was a screensaver application, essentially. So people could upload their, their artworks. And when you went for a coffee in the, in the agency or wherever you worked, you came back and then you had a new project kind of automatically loaded up on the screen. Um, I think it was 17 or 18, trying to monetize that. Had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I joined Lycos. I was very lucky. My dad knew someone there, and I'd been programming since I was a kid. And they got me in, and I was working, you know, HTMLing and stuff like that around 2003, 4. Um, and soon after, I joined the web design department. I actually put the search, the search, um, the search box on the homepage for the first time, and kind of outraged the company. It was kind of kind of astonishing. Um, so. Yeah, I was young and like desperate for attention. I wanted to be in all the magazines, creative review, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I, I did basically, kind of driven by ego, <laughs> essentially. Um, and also in this one magazine here on the left-hand side, and my my boss Paul at Lycos um, proudly, proudly brought it in. But probably what you shouldn't say in in the interview is that you departed an un uninspiring job. So Bruno, that's where I met Veronica, like about 20 years ago now. Bruno was kind of an introduction to um, kind of real type, actually, kind of type with craft and type with function and type with purpose. And the stuff I think you saw before was kind of very um, decorative, kind of indulgent. Apologies for the photos. I've never taken a, um, a, still, a sharp photo in my life. I think these are like 20 years old now. I'm amazed I could find them. Um, but this was really informative. Um, running through the different, you know, old styles and humanists and grotesques and stuff like this, and painting it laboriously by hand. Um, so I left my job at Lycos to intern at design companies, trying to see the world a little bit, try to understand, um, you know, the, the idea of design outside of uh, an internet company. And I've, I found, a, interned with a studio I won't name, um, and it went terribly. Um, I took out a big loan. I left a job that was paying. My mum was outraged. Um, and I was going home every single night, kind of depressed on the, on the bus. And then I met Neville, um, Neville Brody, um, at Research Studios. And um, I, t I turned up, uh, and he, he said, would you like to design the typeface for the Times newspaper? And I, of course, said, yes. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to design it for you. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is it. I think it's still in circulation today. Um, it was really hard work. It's kind of 
problematic, poor kerning, poor low quality curves, um, but I think um, as, as a 19 year old I could, I could hang my hat on that. And they're still using it, yeah. And I just opened up one of the files and found this glorious misinterpolation. So flash in the pan. I was still interested in making digital things. This is a website for um, a friend of mine, a musician, an experimental noise musician. And I think I spent about three months and thousands of lines of code putting together kind of the most complex, unexpected, weird um, user experience you could imagine with type scrolling in and ASCII figlet text and using Flickr APIs and all sorts of kind of wild things. Um, and I'm still kind of super proud about this, but it sort of, I think it crashed about 90% of the computers it ran on. This was a kind of noise identity, live noise identity at the time. And it's kind of sad, another example of these kind of redundant technologies that we, 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 we've kind of lost the time. Um, I moved to Paris with my girlfriend, um, 2008, something like that, and worked for Neville's studio in Paris. This is something I designed for Font Shop. This typeface actually uh, on the poster on the right, left and the right hand side is actually composed of, I think like 80 different randomly selected fonts. From, from the Font Shop library. Mm. And about the same time, the Times were looking into doing um, an italic typeface, and they said to me, Luke, we offer you a contract. It's big money. I was a kid. So obviously, I left my job, and the contract disappeared. So I was unemployed in Paris. Um, so I scooped up some work for, a, for a, um, a fashion company doing digital design. And they asked, can you do Action Script 3? I said, yes, yes, it's fine. I did everything in Action Script 2, and um, <laughs> it was impossible for anyone else to work on it. Depression and mania. Um, well, this is something that's just a consistent um, personally in my life. Um, I think part of the reason you get into, I get into these uh, projects, these type projects and design projects and personal projects and stuff like this is kind of keep, to keep active. Um, are distracted, and I was looking through this hard disk and I found a line of poetry I'd written when I was living in Paris and I thought I would become a, be a poet for the rest of my life and you know, I thought that was an interesting reminder. So I decided to try something different, nolobi.com, which was an online um, website that sold bikes. We imported them from China, um, and stored them and marketed them and did all the social media and all that kind of stuff. But it was just a complete disaster. Um, could import them, the shipping issues, the storage problems, the uh, delivery, pr delivery problems, broken components. Um, and so that was probably my first lesson in why digital products are uh, preferable. <laughs> so family, um, about eight years ago, yeah, eight years ago, um, my oldest son was born. And that sort of changed everything, the perspective in why you're working and what you're working for, and uh, the, the natural financial perspective change, as well as um, just something as simple as time change, and that time is different. You know, it was like you staying up until four o'clock on a deadline versus kind of getting, locking up at six and getting up at six again to go and be there for the family. So Neville, um, called me kind of out of the blue just before Roman was born and he said, Luke, same kind of thing. Um, do you think you could design a super functional typeface for Samsung Electronics? And, you know, I said, um, yeah, 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 no problem. Um, so Samsung, uh, Samsung One was this huge kind of worldwide collaborative font between many different um, collaborators. Um, and I think that was a kind of two-year project. project. Relentless kind of um, relentless learning it was fantastic, exhausting but fantastic and insightful. Um, and working with Neville, um, was basically the beginning of a five-year journey, um, designing fonts constantly. So this is Channel Four, Coca-Cola, Paris Baguette. It's a hilariously named um, brand and career. Um, Mayo Clinic, um, Serif, which was super interesting. 
it's the display versions. Um, and this was super cool because I, I see Tim Aaron's over there. I got, got a chance to reference his book for the micro, for the small size version of the display. So I was really lucky to be able to put, put that into action. Unpaid intern, another um, personal project. I didn't realize until I was putting this presentation together last night that perhaps I did this because I was so pissed off with my other uh, intern experience. So I was try to raise awareness for unpaid internships by creating this kind of platform and project and t-shirts with sales going um, towards a charity. Um, I don't think we raise very much money, 200 euros, and possibly, you know, maybe I was doing it for my benefit. That's my partner. <laughs> um, if you look very carefully, you can see those are kerning specimens. So, nan, or not a number, or not a ninny or never a ninja or whatever. So this is the the pro to the 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 um, minimum viable product MVP of the website. I think I spent all of my savings getting this up, to getting this together. Um, and it's probably one of the most complex things I ever did, like how, how, working out how to sell fonts online with type testers and licenses, and I had nowhere no idea where to begin. But step by step, we we eventually got there. Selling the first font was Nan Vice, which is this kind of like monospaced um, reimagination of a um, uh, font by Emil Rudolf Weiss. And every time I see it, it sort of reminds me. Um, I think we've sold about three copies of this, so business skills. Um, we just launched our, the second version of our website, which is a big change because we have lots of other designers and we have more articles and we have kind of uh, lots of, um, of our custom work to show. So this was a big, big, big um, step for us. Generative fonts. I don't know if you have seen this, but this was a project with Google, or rather Google sponsored it. Um, it was a series of glyph scripts in which you could open a font in Glyphs app um, pick your scripts, whether it's bubbly or um, bubbly or, or dripping or digital or something like this, and it would kind of basically just change the vectors for you. So it's still a working, um, fundamentally still a working um, font file. Uh, I released this, and I think two weeks later, Glyphs transitioned to Glyphs 3. <laughs> So my three months of focused energy was kind of, um, you know, somewhat usable. A machine learning font. Um, this is exactly what it, what, what, what it sounds like. I took the entire Google font library and used it as a um, learning model, as a, as a model to train new glyphs. So this is an example. So it's an interesting idea, um, but it comes off as kind of more of a fuse, like a 90s fuse project. Promotion, attention games. So N NAN, or NAN, um, we, we don't sell through any third parties. We only sell on our own website, and that's quite important to us, which means the, the promotion and the marketing um, and all of the social games that go with that are, are, are kind of more critical for us um, to get in touch with our customers. And for the release of Nanjong, we created a little platform game where you could, um, where you could, could compete um, for, for, uh, t for prizes, essentially. For uh, the release of Nan Tragedy by Jean-Baptiste Morizot, um, we created a typeface specimen that was kind of like infinite, essentially, and we're kind of mashing together various different kinds of Greek texts, creating this kind of pseudo-tragedy. Um, this won't play. Um, we just released Nan Hyena by Raymond Schroeder, which is a wonderful typeface. We created these kind of strange game-like atmospheres to, um, to, to promote it. So Nan Lately. So this is some new stuff we've never shared before. Um, we just did a typeface with uh, Costa, Costa Coffee, um, and we're working more and more with Multiscript. Multi um, so this is the display typeface with a variable wave uh, aesthetic that runs through it. This is the, the Arabic by Naima Benayed. 
We have the Greek and Cyrillic. I think I saw Kostas here. Did I see Kostas? Kostas, you consulted on this. You did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, <laughs> this is for Deichmann, a shoe company, shoe brand. Um, this is actually my partner's uh, handwriting. Um, she's an illustrator uh, by trade. Um, and we were tasked with making the Cyrillic for it. Like, so how do we, I transfer my very French girlfriend's handwriting into Cyrillic. Um, and Fatima Lazaro, who, who works with Nan, was tasked with that and she'd never done a Cyrillic before. So it was another example of um, us not knowing what we're doing exactly. Daria Petrova supported us on, the, on, on con consulting, checking that we, you know, we, we, we didn't completely um, butcher it. This is an open source typeface that's going to be released very, very soon. Um, Latin extended Cyrillic, I say Pan-African, but this is the Pan-African set that Christoph Kerberlin has put together recently. I just want to give you some little, little teasy insights into this. So we seem to be increasingly doing multi-script uh, work, and I think this is obviously a represent kind of part of this very connected brand world. Um, so Y has got in touch recently and asked us to extend, make a small extension to um, Inter. Um, so we're adding some, some, some additional uh, currency symbols. We do a lot of um, logo refinements with brands, with uh, lucky to say people tr trusted by a lot of big studios, like Pentagram and Koto and JKR. We spend a lot of our time doing logo tuning and refinements. And last but not least, Next week we're releasing Hollow, Nan Hollow, which is our kind of biggest, biggest font ever. Um, and it's a very collaborative font. I started designing originally the normal weights, but frankly I'm not sure if I designed it anymore since JB's been working on it and Florian Runger has been working on it and Fatima's been working on it. So this is our big Nan collaborative font release of uh, 36 styles altogether. No italics, no italics. future. So um, I'm pretty much a kind of art director, project manager, HR contract guy now. Um, and we're so busy with our corporate work that we're not doing as many of the kind of cool, fun tech projects that we want to do. So my plan is that we kind of, um, we'd start to reverse that a bit and uh, yeah, let's get back to some of the more, um, more of the fun stuff. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>